Hello, my name is Chris Brusseth, and I'm an instructor in the dental hygiene department at Milwaukee Area Technical College. And I would like to spend the next few minutes discussing hazard communication with you. The OSHA Hazard Communication Standard, or HCS, requires all chemicals in the workplace to be labeled in a manner that warns of any hazards the chemicals may present. The actual format and method of labeling is not specified, so there are several different formats to use. Please follow along in your notes in your Dental Health and Safety Lecture Manual. They can be found under the tab labeled Hazard Communication. This material is also available from the internet. The actual websites are located at the bottom of your handouts. Now let's take a look at the different labeling systems. On the left, you can see a sample of the NFPA hazard diamond. This is one system. Two other HCS compliance systems are Hazardous Material Identification Guide, also known as HMIG, and Hazardous Material Information System, HMIS. You can see a sample of what they look like on the right side of the picture. The first system I would like to review with you is the NFPA Hazard Diamond. This is the system we use in the Milwaukee Area Technical College Dental Hygiene Lab. We use this system because it is easily recognized by the fire department and other professionals. Now open your manual to the NFPA section under HazCon. If you have markers, you can color in your manual's diamond to match the colors on the diamond shown here. Otherwise, you may want to just write the names of the diamonds. You will see hazard diamonds like this on trucks, storage tanks, bottles of chemicals, and various places around campus or town. In the labs here at METC, we do not use the NFPA specified symbols in the white field. Instead, we use an alternative set of symbols that indicate the kind of protective gear that should be used when handling the material. These alternative symbols are drawn from the HMIG system, which differs somewhat from the NFPA system. We will discuss this system also. But first, let's get more specific with the other three diamonds on the NFPA signal. Each color has a coordinating criteria table to help determine what the numbers stand for. This table is for the blue area. As you can see, the code ranges from zero to four on the left side of the table. The criteria are in the middle, and an example is on the far right column. You can see from the table, the first example of peanut oil is not hazardous to health when there is fire present, and is given a code of zero in the blue diamond. On the other end of the spectrum, hydrogen cyanide is capable of causing death in a very short exposure time when fire is present. So it would be coded four in the blue section. Yellow is for reactivity. The concern is will this material burn or explode when conditions of fire, heat, or water are present? Notice the example of liquid nitrogen. It has a code zero. It is a material that will be stable even in the presence of fire or water. Compare that to a highly reactive example of TNT and a code of four. The red diamond signals flammability, not to be confused with inflammation, as if you have an inflamed wound, but rather flammable means can burn. Flammable has replaced an old term of inflammable. Both terms mean material can burn. You can see by this table that a code of zero has water for an example, the material that will not burn and a code of four is given to propane gas, which will burn readily. Please take a minute to familiarize yourself with the criteria for each number and color. Now let's move on to another popular labeling system. 
Hazardous Material Identification Guide, HMIG, is a labeling system developed and sold through Lab Safety Supply Company. The Hazardous Material Information System, HMIS, is a labeling system developed by the National Paint and Coatings Association, NPCA, and sold through LabelMaster Incorporated. Both systems use a label with four color bars and a space at the top where the name of the chemical should be written. Although the details of how the numbers are assigned may vary somewhat between the systems, this is essentially the same overall scheme as is used by the NFPA system. Similarities between the NFPA and the HMIS or HMIGs, both systems have three color-coded fields to indicate the flammability, red, health, blue, and reactivity, yellow, hazards associated with the material. Both systems use a system of five numbers ranging from zero to four to indicate the severity of a hazard, with zero being the least and four being the most hazardous. Differences. They differ in layout. The NFPA uses four diamonds and HMIG uses vertically stacked bars. They differ in the interpretation of the fourth white field. Special handling with NFPA system and protective equipment, or PPE, with the HMIG system. They differ in the intended audience. HMIG, HMIS, targets employees who must handle hazardous chemicals in the workplace. The NFPA system was designed to alert firefighters arriving on the scene of a fire to the hazards associated with material present at that location. Therefore, the NFPA assumes there is a fire present. No such assumption is made with the other system. Therefore, the numbers assigned to the categories may differ between the system, even for the exact same chemical. Now let's take a minute to go over the white bar, the fourth area on the signal. In both the HMIG and HMIS systems, the white bar is used to indicate what personal protective equipment, PPE, must be used when handling the material safely. A letter, number, or icons are often used. Posters displayed in various areas around the lab give a full description of the PPE symbols used. If the material has an icon showing safety glasses, and gloves, then an operator should be wearing that PPE when handling the material. Let's finish up our discussion by deciding when a label should be placed on a container. Is the material hazardous and or is it in its original container? If the material is not in its original container, then it needs to be labeled as to what the material is. If the material is hazardous, then a HASCOM label should be completed and attached to the material. Material safety data sheets are needed to be able to fill out a hazard communication label. MSDS sheets are supplied by the manufacturer of the product and need to be maintained and organized in the workplace or more specifically at MATC Dental Hygiene Program in the Dental Hygiene Clinic or lab. Finally, we ask that you complete the HASCON activity located under the activity tab in your lecture manual. You will need to look up the materials MSDS and create your own label.